I guess you uh, became lovers with uh, Mike McGurk, who a lot of people remember <laughs> sure. as the ring announcer for WWE. Uh, Absolutely. You were married Coffey. eventually. Yeah. yeah, we were married for a year. We got married too young. She was very jealous. Um, you know, we're still friends. You know, I, I like Mike. She's a, she's a wonderful woman. And, um, um, you know, it was just kind of uh, getting married too young. And as a matter of fact, um, I remember the night I was leaving. We were, had gotten a divorce and I was going to the Von Erichs that night. But I wanted to say goodbye to Mike, you know, because she had been my wife for a year. And it was, it's difficult, you know, no matter what, no matter how heated things get, if you really love somebody or love somebody and then all of a sudden you're separating or getting a divorce because of irreconcilable differences, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, um, and, um, you know, I had been uh, uh, letting Doug Summers, who I was working against at the time, ride in uh, my car. And Mike would come with us once in a while because she collected tickets for her dad and her mom, um, who owned the promotion. And um, found out uh, later that uh, he was having an affair with my wife. And, you know, that was very hurtful. So one night in Tulsa, it, it came to the point where I saw him go into Leroy's office. So I came into Leroy's office and obviously I was peed, very peed. And uh, one thing led to another and um, uh, we got into it. Just a cuffs, boom, boom, boom. I beat him to within an inch of his life, as a matter of fact. And in the process, tore, I threw him into the walls, not thinking, you know, again, young and dumb. Uh, threw him into Leroy's walls with all these old time pictures and stuff. And even though Leroy was blind, you know, he was, uh, when he find, found out about this, he was really, really perturbed. And I didn't know about all this until, uh, until later when I go to see Mike, uh, after I got in the altercation with Doug. And so I knock on the door and Leroy comes to the door and he says, who is it? And I said, it's, it's Brian, I just wanted to say goodbye to Mike. He said, you bastard, you tore my house. And so when he said that, I just went back to the car. He started doing a promo on me. And I went back to the car. The only thing I have after putting $100,000 down the house, and, uh, the, the only thing I wind up leaving with is my car, um, one of our Great Danes, because we raised some Great Danes, and um, um, my boat, and uh, my clothes and $500. That's all I had. And i um, excited about getting to the Von Erichs, but thinking about it, I said, I've got to say goodbye to Mike one more time. So I uh, knock on the door again. This time, the door opens, and as the door opens, Leroy has a gun pointed right where I'm standing, but the door's not quite open. The second door's not open, the screen door. So now he's opening up the screen door, so I there's a, like an inlet, you know, like an inlet to the door. And so I jump around the corner, because it's a brick house, and I figure I'll be safe behind these bricks and he's not going to see me. And bam, that gun goes off. I mean, he wanted to shoot me, he was that mad. And he just misses, I could see where the bullet hits right in the ground in front of his uh, Lincoln Continental that he parked right in front <laughs> of the doorway so he could get to it real easy. And I run back to the car shaking like crazy, you know, I almost got killed. And so I said, damn, what am I going to do? So I go around to the back door to peek in to see if I could maybe signal to Mike or something to say hello. And I look and there's like a mummy on the couch. Uh, just uh, you can't see who it is. It's a mummy. And I see Mike, Michael Kathleen giving soup. And it's Doug Summers, who by that time had gotten out of the hospital and was all wrapped up, bandaged up. and. She's uh, feeding him soup and it just broke my heart. I mean, I, I just cried Devin for so, so long, like, seemed like I cried all the way to Dallas.